Hello, everyone. I'd like to officially welcome you to today's webinar, Project Sustainability Approaches and Strategies. I'm Jessica Birch, a training coordinator with the Corporation for National and Community Service, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. I'll also be facilitating the live Q&A at the end of the session. Also joining us are Amy Kanata and Jenny Farrell from our partners at Education Northwest, who have helped to prepare today's webinar and will be managing the WebEx technology. You'll also see them in the chat and Q&A to help address questions you may have during the session. I'd also like to welcome our main speakers today. We're delighted to have with us Sarah Gleason. Sarah serves as a consultant and facilitator and has worked with the Corporation for National and Community Service and Peace Corps, as well as with a variety of nonprofit, government, and community-based organizations. She is part of the VISTA pre-service orientation facilitation team and has also trained VISTA supervisors. Additionally, she has supervised VISTA members. Sarah has a lot of knowledge and experience to share with us. A little later on, we'll also be hearing from Gretchen Arndt and Lindsay Spratt. Gretchen has spent more than 30 years fighting poverty and seeking social justice for disenfranchised adults and children. She was a founding board member of Emmaus in Haverhill, Massachusetts and serves as its Director of Philanthropy. <laughs> in this role, she oversees the organization's successful Rebuilding Lives AmeriCorps VISTA project. Lindsay graduated Mount Holyoke College in May of 2015 with a bachelor's in dance and psychology. She currently serves as an AmeriCorps VISTA with Emmaus Incorporate, Incorporated Rebuilding Lives AmeriCorps VISTA program, where she is the volunteer coordinator. Next year, Lindsay will be pursuing her Master's in Dance and Movement Therapy at Lesley University. I'll provide a snapshot of what we'll cover today, then I'll pass it on over to Sarah. So, what do we hope you're going to get out of this session today? By the end of the webinar, we'd like you to be able to define project sustainability as it relates in the VISTA context. We hope you'll be able to define member and supervisor roles and recognize how members and supervisors can support each other and work with one another to achieve project sustainability. We also hope that you can identify specific practices that can lead to this project sustainability and set up a plan for program sustainability. Last but definitely not least, we hope you'll be able to identify existing resources to support sustainability efforts. So now I'm going to turn it on over to Sarah. Sarah, take it away. I'm turning it on over to Sarah, and I'm not sure if her speaker is I working. I am so sorry. I was still muted when I was saying hi to everybody. So this is Sarah. I'm coming to you from Minnesota, where spring is springing. And as Jessica mentioned, I've supervised VISTAs in the past, and I'm passionate in my work around sustainability. So it's great to be here with you today. We're going to start off with some key questions to ask and answer about sustainability in the VISTA context. I want to ask you to ask yourself, do you know who will use or work with or rely on the knowledge and systems and products or relationships that your VISTAs are building. This might be another VISTA, someone in your organization, or it could be volunteers or other community stakeholders. How will you and your VISTAs ensure that these people understand and are capable of using or working with the knowledge, systems, products, or relationships that the VISTAs are building? And finally, how will you ensure that leaders in your organization and community understand the value of what your VISTAs are building and are committed to carrying it forward? So you've probably noticed that we've opened a poll on the right side of the screen that focuses on that first question. If you haven't yet, take a quick moment to weigh in on the question, do you know who will carry on your VISTAs work after they leave? Select yes if you know who will be carrying on your VISTAs work. Select no if you don't know yet. We'll be looking at some possible ways that you might answer the how questions during the rest of our time together. Thank you, Sarah. So it looks like that poll has, um, has um, ended and we have those results back. So it looks like the majority of people um, said yes. Um, there were some no answers there, but um, for the majority, it sounds like most of them do 
that work. Um, but maybe for those of you who didn't answer, maybe the answer is no or yes, but, um, but yeah, so it looks like we have a mixed bag here. So Sarah, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Okay, well, if you can't answer these questions yet, that's probably a sign that it's time to start a conversation with your VISTA about planning for sustainability. And we know from our experience that VISTAs are eager to talk about sustainability. And as a supervisor, you are key to their understanding of how they and their work fit into the big picture of sustainability for your program or your organization. We hear from VISTAs about this and they tell us that they want to better understand how their activities fit into and support your overall program or agency goals and sustainability. They're interested in tips on how to transfer community relationships to a new VISTA or to a staff member, and they want to hear about examples of how to ensure sustainability. And of course, we know that sustainability is important to you as supervisors. When we hear from supervisors about this, they want to know more about how they can do just that, help VISTAs understand the broader impact of the project activities they're involved in on the overall agency goals and the fact that the two do not live in isolation. They want to hear more about defining sustainability with subsites if you're working with them and how to work with them towards sustaining efforts beyond the VISTA term of service. How to focus more on sustainability from the start, that's really important and helping VISTAs understand how to prepare for the next VISTA if you've got another VISTA coming. We also know supervisors want ideas, ways to work with community partners to sustain the work. So we'll touch on tips and tools and examples related to these topics as much as we can in our time together today. And we'll do that as we work through some of the key questions about sustainability in the VISTA context. What is sustainability? What do we mean by it? How does it work? And who owns it? Who's responsible for sustainability? So let's step back and begin by looking at a definition of sustainability in the VISTA context, since, of course, understanding what it means is the first step to achieving it. In the VISTA context, sustainability is the ability of a program or an organization to continue engaging community stakeholders to meet the needs of the community efficiently and effectively through potentially changing circumstances and sources of support after the departure of the last VISTA member. So by design, VISTA projects are developed with a goal to phase out the need for VISTA members after a short period of time. The work of the VISTA members while they're there should be focused on strengthening the capacity of the sponsoring sites while engaging community members to ensure the program or organization they are supporting can run by itself after they're gone. And as I said, this is really by design. In the VISTA application that was submitted by your sponsoring organization, they will have outlined how the project would be designed to build long-term sustainability in an organization or a program to ensure that it continues after the VISTA resources end. This section of the application also has like a, a discussion of how this approach will change over time as the VISTAs implement the project and build capacity. If you aren't familiar with it, I know some of you probably worked on it and some of you may or may not have seen it. I really recommend looking at your project application and particularly the section that's called Strengthening Communities to see what it has to say about sustainability in your particular project. Well, VISTA members themselves obviously have an important role to play in supporting and strengthening sustainability. The overall responsibility for program sustainability ultimately lies with the staff of your organization. You and your colleagues are the ones who have a longer term, bigger picture view of the program and should be thinking about sustainability throughout the design and implementation of your VISTA project. So, though I imagine it's not new to you, I just wanted to spend a couple moments painting a picture of what overall program sustainability looks like. In general, nonprofit and community-based groups need four kinds of organizational capacity to support sustainability. We've got 
program capacity, which is really means that you have effective programs that are making a demonstrable difference and addressing real community needs. You need communication capacity, which is the ability to tell your story effectively in order to engage and maintain support. Of course, there's human capacity. And here we're talking about the people that matter, effective and empowered staff and volunteers. And of course, the thing that we often think of first when we talk about sustainability, which is financial capacity, Oops. meaning financial resources from a diversity of sources. As we talked about changing circumstances. And just like with a real life four-legged stool, all four legs of the sustainability stool have to be strong enough to support the program's sustainability. If any one leg is weak, the whole stool will fall down. And I want to point out most importantly here, as you'll see, holding it all together, connecting and strengthening these four legs, are engaged and empowered community members and organizational stakeholders. Their support is crucial to sustainability. They're the ones that hold it all together. So in that big picture, I hope it's clear to you how the capacity building work of the VISTA members supports program sustainability. During their year of service, you've got VISTA members working to create, expand, or strengthen your organization's systems or processes, and working to engage and empower community members and organizational partners. And this capacity building work is meant to expand the scale or the reach or the efficiency or the effectiveness of your programs and organizations, enabling your organization and its community partners to sustain program activities once the VISTA project ends. So what does this look like concretely? How does the work of a specific VISTA connect to the big picture? Both members and supervisors have told us that they want to learn more about this, how these activities relate to the larger goals of the organization and even to the National VISTA movement. As part of the application I mentioned earlier, every project must submit a plan that outlines exactly that, how their work will fit in with the national goals and with their agency goals. So what you see, will see coming up here is an example of that, how it might look for a mentoring program. So in this example, the national goal is to provide support or facilitate access to services and resources that contribute to improved educational outcomes. The agency goal that supports that national goal is to improve educational and behavioral outcomes. The VISTA project goals are to ensure, in this case, that children of incarcerated parents receive the educational, social, and emotional support that they need through engagement with a mentor. And then the VISTA assignment description goal for this particular VISTA is to develop a sustainable volunteer recruitment and a management system for the agency's mentoring program. So then the VISTA's activities to reach that goal, creating outreach systems, developing targeted marketing materials, and enhancing the current mentor training. So again, if you haven't seen your project application or if you inherited this work, a great place to start in thinking about sustainability is with those member VADs or assignment descriptions. Each should outline activities that build capacity for your organization and community and connect to your agency goals. So now that we've looked at the overall picture of sustainability and how VISTA activities relate to the larger goals, I'm going to stop for a moment and ask you to weigh in here. What factors do you think lead to sustainable VISTA projects? I'll ask you to enter your ideas in the chat box over on the right-hand side, and make sure you send it to all participants so everyone can see them. Great. Thank you, Sarah. So, um, so Sarah mentioned, what factors do you think lead to sustainable VISTA projects? Um, we definitely know this isn't like, an easy question for maybe some time um, to answer this. Um, we do have some answers coming on in. So it looks like um, Luke here said agency support. Um, 
Or piggyback on that with strong agency support, definitely. Or um, let's see here, um, documenting your policies and procedures from the start and some sort of shared folder or binder so it can be utilized in the future, that's great. Um, knowledge is only great if you can share that, so definitely want to make sure that, that it can be seen by others. Um, Cross-training of current staff. Um, Carrie, that's great. Um, definitely want to make sure you know what else is going on, not just what specific to what you do day to day. Um, we have documentation, developing toolkits. Um, Jonathan here says strategic planning. Um, definitely just don't want to plan for the sake of planning. You want to make sure there's some strategy behind that. Um, relationship building between agency and stakeholder. Um, foundations, but most important, volunteers from community. So we want to make sure that the community is involved. Um, they have to buy into it. They have to be there and involved um, for it to last because it's really about addressing their needs. Um, let's see here. A lot of cross-training we see here. Um, creating business practices, manuals, written down systems. Um, identifying community leaders with an interest in the project, that's great. Um, along with not only just the community, but also the people who influence change in your community want to make sure that they have buy-in. Um, you have redundancy in training. Um, let's see, Robert here says a clear assessment of goals met and milestones. So yeah, so definitely taking a look, um, even almost a lessons learned approach, like this is what we did, how did it work, what needs to be fixed, and going from there. Um, yeah, we have a lot of interaction and interface between VISTAs and community leaders. Um, yeah, this is a big one, you know, making sure that they're visible to the community, that they represent your organization, um, and that that is clear and um, they're out there in that community. Um, and let's end here with Michelle's mentorship and transition training if a new VISTA is coming in. Um, so that's a great thing, making sure that uh, there's some sort of transition from one VISTA to the next or from one VISTA to someone who's going to be taking over their responsibilities. Um, if there could be a training time or a mentorship time, that's also um, a great thing um, to ensure sustainability. So Sarah, it sounds like they're really, um, really on par right here with all of this. So I'm going to send it back over to you. Okay. Yeah, nice work, everybody. Uh, we're going to take a look at what a large-scale study of past VISTA projects found about what contributed to sustainable projects. And I have to tell you that you hit on just about all of the factors that that study uncovered. So uh, this study was done in 2010, and it found that 84% of VISTA projects were still operating three years after the departure of the last VISTA. And as you can see on your slide there, the most important factors cited, which many of these are ones that you noted, first, the capacities and training and dedication of those VISTA members in their service. The support of the project from the community at large, a number of you mentioned this, talking about buy-in and stakeholder support. The age of the organization and the organization's experience with project activities and the centrality of the project goals to the mission of the organization. And I did hear uh, some of that understanding that agency support is crucial to sustainability. So if we flip this around and look at it another way, you also actually hit on some of the things that were named in this study as reasons that projects were not sustained. So for example, I heard about things being well organized and one of the top factors in projects not being sustained in this study was exactly the flip of that, poor management at the organization or project level. Another important reason for lack of sustainability was a lack of needed resources, either funds or volunteers. And that is one that you touched on in your comments as well. A lack of community support, a lack of organization support, and of course, in some cases, uh, projects had met all their goals and they were ended for that reason. So the other thing I want to point out about this slide is that all of the reasons listed on this slide for programs not being sustained involve the kinds of capacity that VISTA members are often assigned to build, internal systems and processes, volunteer and financial resources, and community and organizational support. So that means that your work as supervisors, supporting and coaching your VISTAs, 
in building capacity can have a profound effect on your program sustainability. So as with achieving other goals, success often depends on planning and preparation. Do you know if there is an overall plan in place for ensuring the sustainability of your program? And just to be clear, an overall sustainability plan would address all four legs of the program sustainability stool and the community and stakeholder support that holds it together. As a VISTA supervisor, you will want to have this big picture in mind as you work with your VISTAs to support and ensure the sustainability of their capacity building work. When I asked that question about sustainability plan, you didn't have an answer. If there's not an overall plan for sustainability, of course it will be important for you and your organization to develop one. And we'll share some resources a little bit later in this webinar that can help you with that. And then whether or not an overall plan is in place, you and your VISTA will need your own plan for transferring and sustaining the capacity that they're building during their year of service. In either case, you as a supervisor should be a guide, a planning partner, and a resource as you work with your VISTA to develop a sustainability plan. Supervisors can work together with VISTAs to identify sustainability objectives, to identify milestones marking progress on the path to those objectives, identify a timeline for reaching those objectives, identify activities and practices to get you to your sustainability objectives. Decide who will be responsible for the activities you identify. And some of these activities that you identify may be appropriate for a VISTA member to carry out, while you may find that others are more appropriate for you or another staff member to implement. For example, it may be more appropriate for you or another staff member to take the lead on activities like advocating for a program with organization leadership, board presentations, strategic planning, or working with human resources or IT on systems changes. We'll be giving you some concrete examples very shortly of other kinds of activities that may be more appropriate for your VISTAs to take the lead on. So if you haven't yet, it will be important for you to make a plan with your VISTA to assess progress towards your sustainability ob objectives and to check in regularly on the activities and milestones and, of course, adjust the plan as needed. We all remember that a VISTA year of service goes by quickly, so it's important to talk with them about sustainability early on and during your regular check-ins throughout the year. So just to read reiterate, while VISTAs are assigned to build capacity to support program sustainability, the overall responsibility for sustainability lies with your organization. Do you know who's keeping their eye on the big picture of sustainability for your program? It might be you or it might be someone else in the organization. VISTAs will contribute to overall sustainability through their activities, but the organization has to own it and lead the process. So, you know, in that big picture of sustainability, everyone has a role to play. And here we've tried to delineate how some of that might fall out. You or your organization and community partners are responsible for envisioning the future of the project. And this would have been articulated originally in the project application and concept paper for creating and engaging a community advisory board or something similar. That, too, actually would have been touched on in the concept paper. Creating and implementing a sustainability plan, which I've said several times here. And then if you are working with subsites, orienting them, and certainly orienting your VISTA members to that plan. While those VISTA members then are responsible for building the capacity of your organization and the community for supporting sustainability through their, assignment, their assigned activities, through engaging staff and community partners in or through their VAD activities, and transferring the knowledge, products, and relationships that they develop. So here we've got a chart uh, 
that illustrates how sustainability roles and tasks could flow over the course of a three-year project. Now, I know it's hard to read it all on the slide, but that's why we provided a handout for you to make it a little bit easier to read. The key points here to note are, you know, as you look across this chart, that the host organization, that would be you all, is continually planning forward and growing in its ability to meet its goals by utilizing the capacity that the VISTAs build. And community members and partners are involved from the start in the planning phase, and their role evolves over time from consultation to increasing involvement and ultimately taking on and continuing project tasks and roles. And then you see the VISTA members building on one another's work and ensuring that the capacity they build is transferred to others. So uh, we're going to uh, take a look exactly at an example of this from our VISTA community that illustrates some of the concepts that we've talked about so far and gives us uh, something concrete to think about. And I'd like to welcome Gretchen and Lindsay from the Emmaus Explorers to talk to us more about what this looks like in their work. Hi, I'm Gretchen Arns, and I am the Director of Philanthropy at Emmaus, and I'm really glad to get this opportunity to talk to everyone about the Emmaus Explorers program. Um, just to quickly tell you what Emmaus does, we're a nonprofit community housing development organization located in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And on any given night, over 300 people call Emmaus home. We provide emergency shelter and permanent affordable housing, along with support services and programming to help people rebuild their lives and reach their fullest potential. And today, we're talking about some of that programming that is so essential to support our housing mission. And I'm going to talk to you about the Emmaus Explorers program. The program was launched in 2015. It was actually launched as an AmeriCorps VISTA project. We are currently on the third year of our Rebuilding Lives VISTA project, and the team of VISTAs that served last year identified a need, and that's really important because that's what Sarah has been talking about too, that sustainable projects are generally projects that meet a demonstrated need. And the VISTAs identified the need for more programming to enrich the lives of the children living in the Emmaus Family Shelter. It's an overnight emergency shelter, and people um, are coming right out of homelessness into the shelter. The parents are very stressed out. They are supposed to get in and out of the shelter within eight months. Um, it's funded by the state of Massachusetts, and they have very rigorous goals and objectives attached to the shelter. So the parents are always looking forward to finding employment, to finding housing. And so for the children, sometimes there aren't a lot of extra activities. We do partner with other community groups. A lot of those activities seem to be for very young children, for preschoolers. So the VISTAs identified the need to do a program almost in a way like a summer camp program. There would be an enrichment program for school-age homeless children. And the goal was to help children increase their confidence and self-esteem in the classroom and develop a stronger sense of stability and community through family engagement. We had responded, the AmeriCorps VISTAs along with me as their supervisor had responded last spring to a request for proposals from the Massachusetts Service Alliance. That's our state commission on volunteerism and service, and we were selected. It was part of the youth development initiative movement, and we received one of the grants. So this provided the initial um, seed funding to start the program. And the program included themed summer camp sessions. It met three times a week for three hours a day at a building that we own across the street from the family shelter. It included family enrichment events, either a family enrichment night or we also had field trips. And the field trips were off-site, so it was a real treat for the families. Um, they're pretty much stuck in, at the family shelter or within walking distance 
very few of them have automobiles. Um, if they go somewhere, if they spend money on the train, then they're doing so for appointments, probably medical appointments or appointments um, with their children at their school. So there isn't a whole lot of time for fun. So the VISTAs identified that this is really important to bring joy and hope into people's lives when they're in a time of crisis and they're experiencing trauma. So um, they engaged so many people. We're going to hear about that next from Lindsay. But I did want to, before we move on, I just want to say that right from the beginning, in terms of what Sarah has been saying, we met a demonstrated need, as I said. We were endorsed by the agency's leadership, and we built in community support by engaging other community organizations, using their resources, accessing information and training from them, and also volunteers. So we were setting the stage to create a sustainable project right from the beginning, and I think that's really important. Also, Emmaus has 30 years experience. We were founded in 1985, so we've been in this community for 30 years, which also lent credibility to this project and any project that we do. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, the outcomes we have so far and our future goals. Um, so in 2015, Amaeus Explorers served 50 unduplicated children from 34 families living in our um, emergency living in our shelters. Um, and through the summer and um, fall sessions of Amaeus Explorers, um, we partnered with 13 community organizations and engaged 73 volunteers in over 1,200 hours of service. Um, we have also created three re uh, replicable programs for summer, fall, and spring terms, including Learning is Fun. So that included um, sessions in science and art, health and wellness, and math and reading. And that was just to engage um, children in learning in a fun way to help bridge that gap in the summer. Um, in the spring term, uh, in the fall term, we had um, Building Community, um, which we partnered with police officers, librarians, um, a chef, and some health centers, just, and they all came in and talked more about different community roles um, that the children could aspire to or learn a little bit more about. And right now in the spring, we're focusing on exploring the arts, um, and we've brought our kids to a museum, we're bringing them to a play, we brought in an art therapist, and we've had a concert, so we're just having other activities to expose them um, to all different fields in the arts as well. Um, and this spring, we also introduced our volunteer leadership program to ensure sustainability. And our team developed this program in order to give volunteers um, more responsibility and also alleviate staff involvement. Um, this program puts two leaders together for one day a week and they are responsible for developing and leading the activities for that day. Um, and starting this summer of 2016, we will be piloting a similar program for homeless mothers and other homeless adults in our shelters, and um, Gretchen will explain more about that. Um, so you can see we've come a long way. Initially, when we started this program, as I said, we knew that we were meeting a need, but very quickly it became apparent that we were on to something great. It's sometimes challenging to engage homeless families. There's a lot, as I said, they're, they're really trauma victims. There's a lot of depression. Um, it's hard to really engage them, and immediately we were getting great attendance at all of our family enrichment nights, the field trips were over rolled. It was just really encouraging to see the interest from the families and the kids were thriving. We were observing improvements in their behavior. They um, were really interested in learning. There was a lot of teamwork. We saw a lot of older kids from the shelter really taking on a protective and mentoring role of the younger children who are unrelated to them. It was really inspiring, and it inspired a lot of people here at Emmaus. So pretty quickly, we figured we wanted to keep this going. So we applied for another Mass Service Alliance grant for 2016 Youth Development Volunteer Initiative, and we were selected for that one as well. And we uh, started to look at ways that we could really um, institutionalize this program or formalize it within the Emmaus portfolio 
of programs. And one way to do that, to be honest, was to look at what's the true cost, because I'm not funded out of the grant from Mass Service Alliance, but I was spending a lot of time on this program. There are other staff members. So we did a budget to look at the whole thing, and we realized we were going to need multiple funding sources. So um, I talked to the Corporation for National and Community Service, our local office, and this coming year we are getting two AmeriCorps vistas to support this program. One will be focused on all aspects of the Emmaus Explorers program, resource development, community partnerships, as well as curriculum development and volunteer coordination. And the other one is going to be focused on this new piloting, this similar program for the mothers. It's called the Duville Empowerment Project. And we're in the process now of developing the program, the, the seeds of the program. So when the VISTA comes in, he or she will pick up from there. Um, and the idea is to sort of capture the magic that we discovered with the Emmaus Explorers program so that we can help the women in terms of getting past homelessness and being ready to get into adult education, job training, get jobs, really be, be prepared and be optimistic and hopeful for their futures. And so we're looking at um, piloting this program a little bit this summer uh, and then starting it up in the fall when the AmeriCorps VISTA comes and we've got some basic curriculums ready for the person to start working with. So um, in terms of the VISTA program, the um, Emmaus Explorers program falls in the education focus area for out of school time, and the Duville Empowerment Project for Homeless Parents is probably focused mostly on women because most of our homeless parents in the shelter are women, single-headed households, will be on economic development with the idea being we're also going to do things like financial literacy and try to really help them start to take control of their futures. So we're really, really excited about this. It's, um, it's really invigorated a lot of staff here, too. I want to say that, having AmeriCorps VISTA projects. Um, it's not a burden of sustainability, it's a challenge that many of us welcome because we see the progress, we see the change, and for many of us who've been in this field a long time and really care about alleviating poverty and transforming people's lives, it's inspiring to work with the AmeriCorps VISTA team and develop these projects. And then it's also sad but inspiring to see them move on when Lindsay moves on and her two fellow VISTAs, it'll be sad, but I'll know that they're going off to something great. So it's really fun for me. Um, so now, Lindsay, we're going to talk a little bit about um, creating 10 R tips for creating a sustainable project. And Lindsay's going to start with the first one. Um, so the first one, which is um, really important for my role specifically, is um, creating a replicable project or multiple replicable projects. Um, it's important for me because um, my position is only a year, so whoever is going to take over my responsibilities after needs to have a strong uh, basis so that they're not recreating the wheel all over again when they are running these programs. Um, and so to do this, um, it is really important to keep a really good documentation um, of everything, including the budget, the contracts for everybody, training materials, how much time it takes to do specific tasks. And I do that both in having um, binders and um, having it on the internet through Google Docs or some form, just so that whoever is um, taking it on afterwards, they can build off of that. Um, and so two examples of projects that we have done with Amaze Explorers is one, creating an activity bank um, that we put together all of the lesson plans that we've ever done. Um, with the dates and the notes of how it went. And then we also, a uh, few staff and some volunteers, did some research on um, future activities that we think will be um, great for the program and put them into different activities like active games or lessons or um, crafts and put them into a whole, whole binder so that future people who will be running the programs will have some sort of cohesion with the rest of the program. And the other thing that we um, have done is have a leadership training, um, in which we have a whole agenda for that, and have a partner um, with a local community college who helps with the training. 
and we have a binder with all the leadership responsibilities, um, including this activity bank as well. So all of this will help us move forward and um, build on the Amaze Explorers program. And the second tip, um, cohesion with the organization's mission and strategic goals. Sarah touched upon this already, um, but I will second that this is extremely important to have sustainable projects. And an intentional focus on sustainability throughout the design and implementation phases. As I said, um, right from the beginning when our last team of VISTAs was designing this, we were seeking sustainability just by the way that they designed the project. I mean, we had some funding in place. We were looking at community partners. They actually went out to our local YWCA, YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club. They were trying to get the best curriculums that existed out there. We were looking at um, ways to have a health and wellness day and ways to build that into the program and they talked to the YMCA. We actually had um, a fitness instructor from the YMCA come out weekly. So we were building those relationships right from the beginning that Sarah has explained to us was so important for sustainability. Um, a likelihood of achieving your desired outcomes. My comment on this is this when you're out in the field, when you're a VISTA or you're a staff member like me who's been really boots on the ground for many, many years, you see tremendous need. You see tremendous poverty and there's so much need. But when we look at developing projects that can be sustainable, we have to look at what is our likelihood of achieving our desired outcomes. Because there's so much that can be done, but if it's not feasible, then we're not going to be able to to sustain it, we're not going to find funding. I mean, unfortunately in this business, people won't invest for 10 years without seeing results, even though in reality some of the goals we have would take 10 years to achieve. Very few funders are willing to wait that long. So you've got to look at what can we do that will make a difference and that we can have the metrics to prove that it's made a difference. Um, five, buy-in from the executive leadership and board of directors. And that's been said before, too, how important that is. Um, moving on, understanding the project's funding needs and determining likely funding opportunities. As I said before, we sat down and we did a big budget. And we looked at everything. For example, the janitors and maintenance people here at Emmaus. How much time are they spending? What are the facilities costs we were running this program? We looked at the whole big picture. What are the food costs if we're giving the kids snacks? We looked at the whole thing to see what we really needed to run a top-notch sustainable program. And then we started looking at likely funding opportunities. Um, and as I said, we have already attracted two VISTAs to this project. The overall project is called the Duville Program. And within it is the Emmaus Explorers, and now the new project is the Duville Empowerment Project for, for parents. And so we looked at the big picture of how we were going to make this work to serve homeless families. And, you know, we're submitting funding applications. We're not relying just on the funding the two AmeriCorps VISTAs were going to get. We need a lot of other funding. Effective staff and volunteers. I can't say enough about that. You know, I mean, the AmeriCorps VISTAs who started this were wonderful. The AmeriCorps VISTAs we have working on it this year are wonderful. The volunteers, the leadership program that Lindsay and um, Katie, who's one of the program developer, designed, that leadership training was phenomenal. So now the volunteers are really doing it. And we were crossing our fingers. How is it going to be with volunteers leading these after-school sessions and leading the activities and designing them each week? We didn't know if they'd follow through. They've done an amazing job because they were recruited trained and trained properly. And we had a selection process. We were looking for people that could do the job. And that's so important. And, you know, the staff and the energy of the staff to have sustainable projects is so essential. Non-staff resources. As I said, you need facilities. You need telecommunications. You need all of these other non-staff resources in place to run a good program and to have a sustainable project. As Sarah said, the community partners, the stakeholders, um, that's essential to your success. 
And finally, you need to be continually measuring success and making ongoing adjustments to your project. Um, this project can't be in a vacuum, and what works now might not work in a year or two from now. Um, and that's the process. If you're an organization that is constantly seeking to have um, high quality and high quality delivery of services, that should be built in to your operations. And certainly to keep, create sustainable projects, you need to have evaluation and monitoring built in. I think that's it for us now. Well, thank you, Gretchen. Thank you, Lindsay. That was a lot of great stuff. Uh, and we've been talking quite a bit, so I want to just turn back to everybody who's been listening and gather a few more ideas. We want to hear from you about what you're doing or planning to do with your VISTAs. So use that chat function again, sending to all participants, to name a few examples of how you are working with or coaching or supporting your VISTAs to ensure the sustainability of your program after they leave. Thank you, Sarah. So um, this is a big question, too. We like to give you this big chat question. So, um, so just write into the chat. Make sure you do it to all participants. How are you working with your VISTAs to ensure the sustainability of your program? Um, it could be anything from, uh, let's see here. Let's see, Carlos, let's see, he started this off. So he said, increasing joint uh, visits with VISTAs to ensure con uh, continuity with community members. That's great. Um, let's see, Linda here said that they are in year three and all VISTAs and host supervisors are collaborating on sustainability action plans. That's great, that's great. It sounds like you know where your VISTA project is and then the VISTAs and the supervisors know as well so that they can move forward. Um, Stephanie here said they're creating a sustainability binder to ensure the future success of VISTAs, which is fantastic. Um, let's see here, more about resource binders. Um, cross-training, like we mentioned, so it's great you guys are doing cross-training with staff and or the next VISTA member. It's good to get them up to date as quick as possible. Um, I like this one. I like the name of it, Developing a Program Playbook Manual. I like that. Um, I think it's kind of along the lines of the sustainability binder, putting everything in there. So um, as Gretchen and Lindsay mentioned, not having to reinvent the wheel every time. Um, let's see here. We have a training plans for transition, so getting that set up, and then all VISTA information, procedures, duties, accomplishments, or journals in a shared and protected folder for both the current and future VISTA use. Um, that's great. Um, it's like an ongoing journal for it all, so it's fantastic. Um, starting the budgeting program and training volunteers to take over the program, so that's fantastic. Getting ready uh, those volunteers, and I'm sure the VISTA has recruited, getting them to take over the work so that um, once the VISTA is gone, they can now take ownership of that and, um, and implement that. So that's fantastic. Um, let's see here. We also have to set up a plan and timeline and meet together to check on progress. So frequent check-ins are great as well. Um, I think, Sarah, you might echo this thought, but sustainability just doesn't happen. You've got to plan and you've got to work together for that. So checking on that progress is good. Um, you got to keep having those conversations. Um, and then last one here we'll say is uh, cross-talking with other partners to keep um, all up to date on progress and develop new possible partners. So, um, so definitely talking with all of them, seeing what new relationships can be founded. Um, and yeah, these are all great, Sarah. I'm going to turn it back on over to you. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for all the great ways that you're working with your VISTAs to ensure sustainability. And it sounds like a lot of you are really focused on that essential role that you have as a VISTA supervisor, working with your VISTAs to make a plan for passing on the capacity that they're building. Um, as you may or may not know, in VISTA pre-service orientation and in supervisor orientation, we define capacity building as the transfer of knowledge, products, or relationships, knowing that no matter how much great work a VISTA does during their year of service, if what they build isn't intentionally passed on to others in your organization or in the community, their work won't ultimately contribute to the sustainability of your program or of your organization. And you all provided a ton of great examples of how to do that 
passing on, how to do that transfer. We're going to just touch very briefly on a few more examples of activities that can help with passing on the work of your VISTAs. So if they are building knowledge and need to pass it on, I've heard some great ideas here about manuals and training and binders, and I'm just going to name a couple of other ways that knowledge might be passed on. Your VISTAs might create asset maps or other ways of representing and sharing uh, the assets or capacities or potential partners that they've identified in your community so that those assets can be connected and built upon by others after the VISTA is gone. They could be doing that in the form of a stakeholder analysis, using the knowledge that they've gained so they can pass on, again, those results for others to build upon. Or if they're doing research or identifying resources, there's all kinds of ways that that could be documented and passed on, whether that's a written report or a slideshow or an electronic directory. You know, you as a supervisor can help the VISTA identify a format that will be accessible and useful to others after they're gone. The VISTA might also be collecting stories, stories of people who are positively impacted by your program, volunteers. Many of you are developing volunteer leaders, others who've invested in your program. These stories can be written or recorded, and they can be used then by others in communication, in outreach, in raising resources, and of course, in reporting back to stakeholders. And either you or your VISTA can take some of that and make presentations to organizational leaders and staff, you know, aiming at that alignment, sharing results, connecting it to your organization's goals, your organization's effectiveness and sustainability. And VISTAs can also be creating or identifying opportunities to share the results of their research or the story of your program with others, with partners, with potential supporters, or out in the community at large. If they're building products, systems, or processes, I hear a lot of focus from all of you on how you transfer those things. You know, once you have identified who's going to be using them, the VISTAs can, as many of you are doing, design and carry out training for those users or work with them one-on-one -on -one to ensure that they understand and are comfortable using whatever it is that VISTAs have built. And I heard many of you talking about uh, getting policies and procedures and systems written. You know, they can create step-by-step -step guides to help others carry their work forward, event planning guides, user guides, process guides, templates to make tasks easier for others in the future. And of course, I hear a lot of you focusing on this, super important assembling those products and storing them in a way that they'll be accessible after the VISTA is gone. Many of you are using shared electronic resources, and if people know how to use them, that can be perfect. If there isn't already a shared drive in use at your organization, or if you want to be sharing with people outside your organization, the VISTAs can explore free resources uh, to share those things online. And of course, and one thing that I have found in my work with community groups is that sometimes tools that are familiar and easy for me are not familiar to everyone. So the VISTAs can be making sure that whatever sharing platform you choose, whether that's Google Docs or something else, that they, help, they can help folks get comfortable with using it before they leave. And this one, Hopefully everybody's already got in mind, but you want to make sure that those resources are not just linked to an account that will disappear after the VISTAs are gone, and you want to make sure that you've got any usernames or passwords before they leave. Relationships, I think uh, many people have recognized that relationships can be among the most difficult kinds of capacity to transfer successfully, and I heard some of you on the chat sharing some of the ways that you're already thinking about and building toward that, like joint visits with the VISTA. You certainly want, as some of you named, to make them to pass on 
a detailed database of some sort of their contacts, notes that will help other people understand the relationships and how best to communicate with folks. But I think the biggest thing here is that VISTA should be intentional from the start about building relationships that are identified with your organization or your program and not just them as an individual. You know, they can make clear when even from their first introductions that they're representing an organization in a relationship, not just themselves, so that people can make a clear connection and know that they'll work with other people in the future. They can connect community leaders and volunteers and program champions to you and your staff and your program and organization through events like volunteer recognition events and celebration events or by involving staff and leaders in training sessions or meetings and of course by making personal introductions. And you know, even if you do have another VISTA coming on board, a staff person may need to bridge the gap. Um, so you know, ha having the VISTA bring someone from your organization with them to meetings, making introductions, setting up meetings specifically to build relationships can be a piece of that picture. And of course, we want to make sure that VISTAs are preparing people for their departure, making sure that they know that the folks in the community that they're working with know and feel comfortable with and have the information they need to contact you or another staff person or another VISTA. They may also be doing things that are a little bit more formal. I heard at least two projects doing uh, the development of volunteer team leaders. VISTAs can do that. They can create a community advisory board or a group like that. They can document exactly what is the scope of responsibilities for these folks, who they are, any kind of agreements they've made, and just make sure, of course, that there's a plan to continue working with them, continue groups meeting after the VISTA is gone. And finally, if you have VISTAs who are working with organizational partners, again, formalizing, I know that Gretchen talked about institutionalizing and formalizing. Formalizing that in, ter in terms of written memoranda of understanding or memoranda of agreement that articulate the partner's roles and responsibilities can be an important way of passing on those institutional relationships. So, whew, lots of ideas. I'm going to do one more quick chat here. Now that you've heard all of this, I want to ask you to imagine, whether it's true or not in your situation, that your current VISTA will be the last one at your organization. Take a moment in the chat function to name one action that you would plan to take to ensure that your program will continue after that last VISTA is gone. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and thank you all. We have a bunch of different suggestions here for um, for what people will do and how to transfer that knowledge and that relationship and those products. So out of all we've talked about, out of all that you guys have shared amongst one another, um, what is that one action that you'll take um, to ensure that the program continues past your last uh, this is departure? Um, and going with Sarah, imagine that the vista you have is the last one that you will have. So. Bridget here said that uh, begin a biweekly meeting with supervisors to execute sustainability plans. So great. So um, start that now. Start that sustainability plan meeting um, just to see where we are and to make sure that that doesn't get lost um, with all the tons of other work that we have to do each day. Um, let's see, a community event or celebration with volunteer vistas recruited to keep the momentum. That sounds like a great idea as well. Um, incorporate leaders um, developed by the Sent General Leadership Group of Organizations, which is great. Um, continuing successful partnerships that were developed. So yeah, so maintaining those relationships, making sure that um, they're also tied to your organization, that they love your VISTA, but that they also know that your VISTA is representing your organization and continue that relationship even once the VISTA is gone. Um, recording documents and handbooks. Um, also, it would help to have an exit conversation so that folks know what are the resources and why it was done that way. Um, that's great. Those are also great, too, to see, you know, what they like about their year, um, what would they change, what advice would they give to that next VISTA. Um, that's also a great way. 
Um, and then share lists of community contacts, make introductions, um, going along with that, making sure that those relationships are continued. Um, and then we'll stop here with uh, Estella, promote the events and successes by VISTAs by staff community volunteers. So celebrate the work that VISTAs do, celebrate what's happened, and hopefully get more um, community volunteers and more community interest to build up your project. Um, so these are great, guys. Um, I'm going to send it back on over to you, Sarah. Okay, thanks, Jessica. So we do want to pass on uh, some resources that may help you and your VISTAs and your organization as you plan for and assess your progress towards sustainability. Uh, we're going to share these links along with the recording of this webinar on the VISTA campus in about a week. So this slide shows a few that you may find useful. Uh, you see on the left-hand side some VISTA-specific resources. There is the uh, first one here at the top of the list, actually, is was created by VISTA leaders, this program sustainability assessment checklist. And I found some great products that have been created by VISTA leaders over the year on the campus. This is one of them. There's some others here about understanding capacity building in action, some video there. Uh, we've talked about meeting regularly with your VISTAs. There's a template that you can use and adapt. And of course, the sustainability report that we talked about earlier in this webinar, you can see the whole thing. Uh, and that looks like that link is, gonna, is in the chat, gonna be in the chat as well. On the right-hand side, uh, there are a couple of external resources that you may find helpful in assessing program sustainability, particularly looking at that bigger picture. These resources are not endorsed by the Corporation for National Community Service, but are simply examples of other tools that can help you to understand and build a plan for overall program or organization sustainability. The first one you see there, uh, the Program Sustainability Assessment Tool, PSAT, it was originally developed for public health programs, but it actually could be used by any community-based organization. They've got all kinds of good resources there, descriptions of eight different domains of sustainability, a free online assessment, planning templates, action steps in each domain, some great stuff that could also help you in your conversations with VISTAs about sustainability. The second um, is a resource, if you're thinking about and looking at sustainability at the organization level, it's a learning guide and a set of tools from the Community Foundation of Jackson Hole, and it focuses on high-level elements of organization sustainability, like organizational vision and governance. Of course, the most important part of all of this is what you're going to do with it in your real life. So we have a few next steps to recommend to you. We are uh, next Wednesday uh, doing a live webinar on sustainability for VISTA members. So you could let your VISTAs know about that. And if they aren't able to attend, like this one, it'll be posted on the campus in about a week. You can as I mentioned way back an hour ago, review your project application's strengthening community section that describes how it's designed to build sustainability. You can talk with your VISTAs. This is super important, having a conversation about the big picture of sustainability and how their activities relate to larger goals. And together you could make a list of the capacity that they're building that needs to be transferred so you can build a plan for how that'll happen and you may find it useful to review some of the sustainability resources we've mentioned and use them to start or enhance your program's sustainability plan. And that will help you to identify activities that VISTAs aren't addressing that you or others in your organization will ultimately need to be responsible for. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, so before we get to the live Q&A, we do just want to know, we want to know what you thought. So on the right side of your screen, you'll find a quick poll where you can share feedback about this webinar. Um, please take a moment to answer these questions. Um, we do like to improve these webinars based on your input. We look at them every time. 
Um, so please let us know what you thought, what you loved, what you thought to be better, and um, we definitely take those to heart. So as we're doing that evaluation, um, we know that we've given you a lot to think about. And now it's time for your questions. Um, you can ask a question by using the Q&A panel located in the right of your screen. Um, I'll also now ask the operator to let us know how you can ask a question by the phone. Um, operator, are you there? Yes, I'm here. If you would like to ask a question by phone, please press star followed by the number one, unmute your phone, and record your name clearly. Your name is required to introduce your question. If you need to withdraw your question, press star followed by the number two. Again, to ask a question by phone, you would press star followed by the number one. Thank you. Thank you. And so as we wait for those questions to come on in and as we wait for them to come through the Q&A, um, I want to go back to some of the next steps that Sarah mentioned. Um, we do really encourage um, your VISTA members to join the webinar next week around sustainability. Um, this is one of only a few that we do that's in partnership with one another, um, that the VISTAs and the supervisors are, are highly intertwined. Um, since sustainability really does affect both um, the VISTA as well as your project, most importantly your project, um, it's a great way and it's a great conversation starter about sustainability. Um, if you attend this one and then your VISTA attends the next one, maybe meet up afterwards um, and talk about next steps. You'll both have that sustainability right on your mind, so we definitely recommend that. Um, so just something to think about. So. Um, I did get a question here about the webinar I'm speaking of. Um, Estella wrote in here, what time is the webinar for this for next week? Um, the time of the webinar is going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern um, on, the, on Wednesday the 27th. So 4 p.m., or I'm sorry, 2 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday the 27th. Um, so um, they can go ahead and register for that now. Um, it is on the VISTA campus, so definitely have them check that out. Um, operator, let's go to the phone and see if we have any questions on the phone. Operator, are there any questions over the phone? I am showing no questions by phone at this time. Okay, great. Um, so I am going to, and it looks like, um, thank you, Amy. Um, for all of those of you who are wondering about where that uh, registration link is for that webinar for the VISTA members, Amy did post a link to the VISTA campus webinars straight for the VISTA webinars, so um, go ahead and copy that link, send it to your VISTAs, and they can go ahead and register. Um, so it doesn't look like we have any additional questions, unless I'm just seeing one now. Um, are there any additional questions in the Q&A? Um, I do just want to invite Sarah, Gretchen, and or Lindsay to provide any last thoughts here while we see if any questions come in. Um, do you guys have anything to add to this webinar, anything else that you'd like to say to kind of wrap this up here? Um, this is Gretchen. All I'll say is I think that, you know, having been um, in grant writing and being in nonprofit management for all these years, you know, sometimes sustainability does become a dirty word. Um, when you're writing a grant proposal and you're trying to get funding for something and they say, how are you going to keep this sustainable and you haven't run the program yet, it's overwhelming. But I think the way the VISTA program is designed and um, the way the um, sort of qualifications to get a VISTA, right from the beginning, you're being asked to look at sustainability. You know, you're not allowed to use your VISTAs to do direct service. So in a way, I feel like the program's designed very well. You know, obviously it's designed to build organizational capacity. And I feel like it does do that. And so I just encourage people, sustainability is a little scary and overwhelming. And at times, you know, when you're writing your grant proposals, you feel like you're writing um, a lot of gibberish into the, to the space. But with the VISTA project, I really feel like it's legitimate. I mean, I do feel like you're being called from the beginning to be sustainable and you're given the tools like this webinar and the support from your uh, field consultant in order to do that. So I encourage everyone to not be so afraid of it. That's great. Thank you, Gretchen. And, um, and yeah, that's something, that's something that we touched on. But yeah, we definitely don't want sustainability to be seen as a dirty word um, in this context. Um, you know, it is hard talking about sustainability when you haven't run the program, like you mentioned, Gretchen. But, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's great that it gets you to start thinking about this right away. And 
um, I think as Sarah mentioned earlier, um, we know that maybe you're not the one who wrote the application for the VISTA um, project. We know that maybe you're coming into this. So definitely taking a look at that application, looking at all that to really get an idea of what was initially considered um, like the part of the sustainability plan will really help get you kicked off and started with this, especially if you are somebody, someone coming into this um, fairly, fairly new. Um, so um, I'm going to see if we have any questions on the phone. Operator, do we have anybody on the phone? We are still showing no questions by phone at this time. Okay, great. Um, we did have a question in the chat. Um, it's not necessarily related to sustainability, but I definitely want to address it because we did talk about direct service and indirect service and how that affects uh, capacity building and sustainability. Um, we did have a question here that says, is verbal translation considered direct service? Um, and so um, that's kind of, that's a really broad question. Um, so I'm going to try my best to answer it. Um, so this is, uh, we, obviously they're focused on capacity building and doing indirect service, building up um, maybe a tutoring program as an example, um, or a volunteer program um, within an organization. Um, we also, we understand that in order to recruit, in order to, um, like for those VISTA to do their position well and to really um, understand what the needs are of the community, there may be some times where they need to, it's a learning experience. So maybe they need to know all of what it takes to be a tutor in order to start building that tutoring program. Um, really understanding the ins and outs of that work. Um, so verbal translation, I'm not sure if it's, um, if that's something maybe that the project is recruiting for or, you know, if this is, um, if they're, part of their project is to develop some sort of um, translating service or if they're working with people um, to get employment and maybe part of that is translating. Um, it's definitely something um, that the VISTA can participate in order to learn how to build up that program, um, but it shouldn't probably be something that they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, ideally, if that's part of the project or if that's part of the community that you're serving as um, individuals who need verbal translation, um, probably part of that project um, and part of the VISTA's assignment would be to maybe recruit people who can do that, volunteers um, who would be willing to volunteer to their time to do that translation. Um, so we definitely understand that this is need to understand, um, especially those working with volunteers, what they're recruiting their volunteers to do. Um, but verbal translation should not be like a day-to-day -day activity for them. Um, but if you have someone who can translate, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask one last time if there's any questions over the phone. We are still showing no questions by phone. All right. Well, um, I know we've given you guys a lot of information. I do want to say thank you all for joining us. I want to give us a big thank you to Sarah, and Gretchen, and Lindsay for joining us. Um, if you do have questions, if the moment you log out of this webinar, you're like, oh, man, I forgot to ask this question, no worries. You can email us at vistawebinars at cns.gov. We do check it. We do look at it. So, um, so please do um, email us if you do have questions. Our next webinar um, for VISTA members, like we mentioned, is a sustainability webinar. And our next supervisor webinar, which is actually going to be a supervisor and member webinar that we are encouraging you to join with your VISTAs, is preparing your VISTA members for life after VISTA. There's quite a few steps that go along with closing a VISTA out of service, things that you need to do, things that the VISTA needs to do, and things that everyone should kind of consider. So we definitely want um, you to join us if you can. It's May 17th at 2 p.m. And we encourage you and your business to join together um, so that you both can understand what, what needs to happen to prepare for life after this day. Um, so thank you all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you again.